Hey traders, it's John Fortune here with this week's weekly Forex forecast. Hope everybody's having a fantastic weekend. Last week was an extremely low volatility week across many markets, the S&P 500 and also the dollar barely moved last week as we saw the VIX breaking down. And if we look at the last four days in the dollar, one, two, three, four, they all sit within the Monday candle. That's how low volatility was in the markets last week. And I believe that's because we've got GDP data coming out next week. Okay, so quick look at the economic calendar. Next week, it's this GDP data I'm paying attention to on Thursday, and I will explain why. But first, we do have some inflation data out of Australia on the Wednesday. Also, the BOJ meeting on the Friday, and we have PCE inflation data on Friday. So those are important. I don't think we see the BOJ changing the yield curve control stance just yet. They are likely to do that at some point, but I don't think they do it in this meeting. But it's the GDP data I'm really paying attention to next week. Why? Well, GDP is a lagging indicator. It's really just telling us what's happened in the previous three months. So why then, you know, am I especially looking for this next week? Well, because it is going to come out positive. But what you have to remember is when this happens, very often you will find especially institutional investors who have made money to the long side in stocks as GDP has been growing in Q1. They are likely to look to unwind or even close out positions, perhaps even reverse positions when the GDP data comes out. So often you see this piece of news discounted. And if we're going to get the S&P 500 lower and we're going to start to see the dollar rally in and we get this kind of risk off coming in, it is likely going to be after the GDP data comes out for Q1 because then the market is going to have GDP for Q1 in the books and it's going to start to look ahead towards Q2 for the expected GDP and returns from the markets. So pay attention to the GDP data on Thursday. I don't think it's important because it leads the markets in any particular way. I think it's important because that could be the turning point where Q1 is in the books and then traders look ahead to Q2, which is likely to see an underperformance of the markets compared to Q1. Okay, so having a look at the scorecards for the coming week, we can see the New Zealand dollar has actually weakened in the scorecards to minus three. And this makes this the best short that I'm going to be looking at in my watch list in the coming week. Alongside that, we also have the Swiss franc still at plus four, so the best long. And Swiss franc long plays were what we looked at in last week's video, and they did work very nicely last week. And coming into this week, I like those Swiss franc long plays once again. We're going to be looking at New Zealand franc to the downside, Aussie franc to the downside. We're also going to look at CAD franc to the downside. So those commodity currencies vis-a-vis -vis the Swiss franc. And we're also going to look at Euro New Zealand to the upside, Euro Aussie to the upside, Euro CAD. And also we can look at the pound versus the New Zealand versus the Aussie and also the CAD. Now you may be wondering, well, why not? the US dollar or the Japanese yen. It's because I favor those risk off setups once again going into next week. Okay, so let's have a look at the individual currencies before moving on to the markets themselves next week. And you can see in the watch list here, I do favor the New Zealand and the CAD shorts over the Australian dollar. Why? Because if you look back, we did see the Australian dollar strengthening a little bit in the scorecard. So my top six markets going into next week are the CAD shorts and also the New Zealand shorts. But looking at the individual currencies, you can see the dollar, as I pointed out at the beginning of the video, rallied on Monday and the subsequent days for the rest of the week were all inside Monday's range. That is extremely low volatility. And when you have low volatility in markets, you very often see opportunities drying up. Markets just chop around. They don't do much. So going into this week, I do think the same really applies as we discussed in last week's video, which is that the dollar is bearish, but it's at a place where it's trying to form a bottom key area of support down here at the previous low as well. And we've also seen it bottoming or troughing in the scorecards, which means on a four week rolling basis, the probabilities of it going down further have diminished. So downside is limited. So it makes the dollar difficult because it's bearish, but downside is now limited. It's not as bearish as it was. So I do think once GDP comes out and we start to look ahead into Q2, I do think we see the dollar actually strengthening as risk off starts to come into the markets. We haven't seen full blown risk off coming into the markets just yet. 
And in fact, there are signs that we may get a little bit more risk on at the beginning of next week. But I do think coming into May, especially May seasonally, is a month which after February does very often have negative declines in equities and you see risk off. So I do think we could be seeing that in May. And it does paint a picture here of the dollar actually trying to form a bottom still. Next is the euro. The euro came up and took out the previous high. And relatively speaking, I do like the euro, but in and of itself, kind of inverse to what we just looked at in the dollar. It's bullish, but it's not as bullish as it was, and it's potentially an area where it's failed to break out and it could be reversing. So again, we are at a kind of wait and see area in a number of these markets where they could go either way, but my view is that we do start to see the dollar higher the euro selling off and you know failing to break through here and also equities lower going into May. That is my view. But you can see we're at a number of decision points in these markets. Next is the pound, another market which really didn't do anything last week. We are still failing the major breakout and you can see there's actually a mini head and shoulders forming here. So we break this low down here next week, you could actually see this starting to sell off. My view, as I've been saying to you guys, is that we do come down to the lows here. And I do think the dollar this year, it doesn't happen, it's not going to happen straight away, but I do think the dollar heads and takes out the previous highs from last year. Not a very popular opinion as it currently stands. However, I have been saying since last year, I think that's the case, but these things do take a bit of time. And it may well be that we start to see the pound breaking down next week and also again going into May as we see risk off coming into equity markets and we see risk off setups starting to play out. So the dollar higher, maybe even the yen higher, the Swiss franc higher, and especially the commodity currencies lower in risk off and then followed by you know the pound and the euro vis-a-vis -vis the safe haven assets and currencies. Next is the Swiss franc. Now the Swiss franc is really performing nicely. And this has been a market ever since the beginning of the year, I've been highlighting to you, keep an eye on the Swiss franc to the upside, to the upside. This is where money is to be made this year. And so far, this has performed really nicely. Going into this week, once again, Swiss franc longs are my primary setups that I want to get involved with if possible next week. Next is the yen. We have the BOJ on Friday next week. And so this market is unlikely to do much. We may even see this just coming down, closing the gap here. Kind of bearish to neutral on the yen. But with the BOJ on Friday, you know, there is the risk of them scrapping yield curve control or just readjusting, which is more likely that they're not going to do it all in one go. But, you know, putting the cap from 0.5 to 0.75, something like this. And that comes with it a risk of yen strength. So if you are shorting the yen or you're trading some of that near term weakness in the yen, just beware, although I don't think they're going to do that on Friday, the risk is to the upside in the Japanese yen on Friday's meeting if they unexpectedly do uh, start to roll back their yield curve control cap a little bit. So just something to bear in mind in terms of risk event next week. Next is the CAD. We're starting to see crude oil softening and we did see the CAD selling off. So I am looking for the declines in the CAD. And this is something I've been highlighting really since the beginning of the year. I did say to you, I do think we're coming down to the low. It looked like we were gonna come up and take out and test this is a kind of bigger ABC. Maybe we still will, but as it currently stands, I do favor CAD shorts going into next week. Next is the Aussie. I have been saying since the beginning of the year, I believe we're heading back down to the lows and we're still in this consolidation in the Aussie, but this is just a big bear flag as it currently stands. And it does look like we could now be set to break lower out of this next week and start that journey back down to the lows. And we should see the dollar pushing higher towards its highs it's not, again, going to get up to its highs next week or anywhere near next week. But by the end of the year, I do think we could be retesting those highs on a bigger risk off move. And finally, the New Zealand dollar, another market which I did say to you in this area, I'm looking for this to come down and test the lows. And these things, again, they take time. We've seen the double top reversal first take place. And we had the break. Now we've had this consolidation. Now we're starting to break down. So the next target would be this low. But once we break this low, we could be seeing momentum coming into the downside. Again, I think we're coming down to test the lows this year in the New Zealand dollar. So New Zealand dollar, Aussie and CAD, they're my three favorite shorts going into next week, especially versus the Swiss franc, number one. Then also uh, the euro as well, and potentially the pound, because that is holding up in the scorecards quite well as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the watch list for the coming week, starting with crude oil, as we always do. Crude oil is very, very neutral. I don't have a very strong bias on this one way or the other. I do favor to the downside crude oil next week on balance. 
And we do have this prior low in the daily sitting right in this kind of max profit taking area. And this is a pretty good target because even if crude oil was going to start to break higher, it would probably do so in this kind of inverse head and shoulders coming down, testing the left shoulder and then starting to rally like this. That tends to be how markets reverse. So look for this to the downside. The conservative target here would be the closing of the gap. But then if we do break down there, look for the prior low over here, roughly at the 74 area in crude oil. Again, I do not have a strong bias on this. I don't think this is a fantastic market for trading, but we do look at this every single week. So the first market we're going to look at here in the forex complex is New Zealand franc. This was a market highlighted last week and we traded right into the max profit taking area. And again, these areas are not to say that the market is forecasted to go right here every single week. You know, when you take these out very often, you should expect a correction. What they are to say is if you trade into these areas, for example, down here, that is unlikely to see the market going much lower than those areas. So they're kind of max profit taking opportunities. So we took out this last week and that was pretty much the move for last week in New Zealand franc. Going into this week, because we took out the target, I would expect first a correction. So any pullback here or on the four hours, look for this to pull back and consolidate. That would be the opportunity to look for shorts once again down to the 0.5400 area. Next is CAD Frank. We have a really nice sell off here. And again, we're right near the low. So any pullback in this market, any consolidation is viewed very similar to this or this is viewed as the opportunity to start to look for bearish reversals. And if we get those bearish reversals, we're going to be looking down towards, first of all, the prior low and then onto the 0 0.6520 area. And the final franc pair here is Aussie franc. Now, I do like these as well, even though they're not highlighted in gold. And you can see, unlike the other two, which actually sold off, Aussie franc really kind of just consolidated. And this was the Aussie, you know, actually uh, getting a little bit stronger in the scorecards, even though it's bearish. But going into this week, this does provide a potential opportunity. Now we've had this breakout for a pullback and a bigger move down towards the 0.5900 area. So I'm going to be looking for this to consolidate. And once we get this kind of bear flag or consolidation because the market doesn't move in a straight line, that's the opportunity to look for bearish reversals down to the 0.5900. Okay, so next to the euro pairs, starting with euro dollar. Euro dollar isn't highlighted here because I don't think this is a fantastic opportunity next week. We are trending to the upside and the euro is projected to outperform the dollar, but we do have GDP coming out and the problem with euro dollar long plays or trades is that it feels like potentially picking up pennies in front of a steamroller because yes, we may come up and test this high and on balance, I would be bullish, especially into the 1.110 area. But at any time, especially if we get GDP days coming out and catalyzing a reversal, at any time we could get the dollar bottoming and really starting to get momentum from that bottom and equities in the US also selling off, seeing risk off coming in. And that's going to push euro dollar to the downside. So like crude oil, we look at this every single week and I do on balance favor longs, but I am unlikely going to trade euro dollar at all next week because I think there are much better markets to trade. And this market doesn't quite have the edge that a number of these other markets do. Next is Euro New Zealand. This was a market highlighted to the upside last week as a good market to be trading. And we did come right into the max profit taking area last week. Going into this week, because we've traded into this, I do expect a correction of consolidation. Any pullback is viewed as the opportunity to start to once again look for breakouts and long opportunities into the 1.8100. Next is EuroCAD, another market which traded right into its target or max profit taking area last week. And again, you can see this was pretty much the full move in this market last week. I am looking for this to pull back because markets don't move in a straight line, but any consolidation next week, potentially even testing this high, so broken resistance turning support, that would be an opportunity to start to look for buy setups into the 1.50 area. And finally, Euro Aussie, we have got some really nice momentum to the upside and we've actually broken out of this consolidation. So any pullback in this market next week is viewed as an opportunity to look for longs into the 1.6600 area. And finally, the pound pair starting with pound New Zealand. Any pullback and consolidation in this market is viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish breakouts up towards the 2.0455 area. Next is Pound CAD. Now, Pound CAD is breaking out of a major consolidation here, 
well, in the four hours, I say major consolidation, you know, going back to the end of March. And we can see here, if we can pull back and we can start to, I'm not a massive fan of diagonal trend lines personally, but if we can pull back, test these highs over here, this is an opportunity to start to look for bullish breakouts in this market. I'm going to be looking up towards the 1.700 area. And last but not least, pound Aussie. We have started to break out of this consolidation zone. So if we can push a bit higher with momentum, any pullback, this would be the opportunity to look for this bull flag next week. I'm going to be looking up towards the 1.88 area. Okay, so wrapping up the video with gold, silver, and Bitcoin, starting with the gold silver ratio. And you can see the gold silver ratio has just been tanking. And I've been saying in previous videos, I do favor silver long plays over gold. The problem I have going into next week is the dollar is at an area where it's trying to form a bottom and can potentially bounce. And especially if we see some risk off coming in, strengthening of the dollar is a headwind to gold and silver longs. So whilst gold and silver longs were highlighted in these videos as great long plays with the dollar kind of bearish and weakening, with the dollar potentially forming a bottom, I don't think these trades have edge like they have had previously in Q1. So just bear that in mind. On balance, I am still bullish on both, but I don't view either of these three markets here as great opportunities or markets to be trading next week. Okay, so let's have a look at gold because gold is very, very interesting. I'm not a big fan of Elliott Wave and these kind of things because most of the time the markets are not moving on wave counts. Wave counts, in my opinion, are something that should really jump out to you and you should be able to see it crystal clear. Otherwise, you know, you can really see whatever you want to see in the markets when you look back. And in terms of gold, what's very interesting is there is what seems to be a very clear wave count jumping out in gold, which confirms a potential top or reversal and that bottom that we discussed in the dollar because gold and the dollar, you know, they tend to move inversely. Not all the times, but they tend to. And if you look down here, we do have a low. We've got one, which is momentum. Then we have a two wave, which is deep. Then we have a third wave. And then we have a fourth wave over here. And if you break this down more, you can see one, two, three, and then you can see or I, 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 I as it usually would be labeled, and then IV, and you can see IV is actually this kind of almost ascending triangle, which is when you get sideways patterns in the fourth wave and you usually get deep wave twos. And then you can see even in the final piece here, and I'll just take this off to make this clear at the end, you can see even the fifth wave breaking down one, two, three, four, five, and then the sell-off. So I would not be surprised to see this come up maybe into the 20, 30 area, but that could very well be the right shoulder here. Again, I don't have a huge conviction on this because A, I'm not massively into Elliott waves because they can morph and change. And B, I don't like picking tops and bottoms particularly because it's much better and easier to make money trading in the direction of good markets with edge as opposed to trying to pick tops and bottoms. But what is interesting, if this really is going to form a head and shoulders and start to reverse, that would confirm that bottom in the dollar. So in gold, you kind of have the same problem as being short dollars, right? It's bearish but it's not as bearish as it was. So the shorts aren't that fantastic now compared to what they were. And therefore the longs in gold, again, perhaps picking up pennies in front of a steamroller, because if this is near a top, any long plays do actually run the risk of a bigger sell-off to the downside. So I don't have a very strong bias on this. It's not highlighted in gold, but if you are long and we do get one final push up, the 2030 area, or you could even say the 2020 area, is where I would be looking to book max profits because past here, we start to run the risk of a reversal. Next is silver. It is also bullish, but again, not as bullish as it was previously because the dollar is now strengthening. So if you are going to look to trade these, I would personally prefer to trade silver to the upside. And if we do get the opportunity to trade silver and we do get the dollar coming down a bit, I would be looking back up to the previous high because again, once we start to trade past this high, we run the risk of a double top and a sell off. So out of these two, I do favor silver for longs, although I don't think either of them are as good 
to the long side as they were you know, in Q1 as the dollar was really selling off. But if you are going to look to trade either of these, I would prefer to trade silver and I would be booking profits at the previous high. And last but not least, we have Bitcoin. I do not have a strong bias on Bitcoin one way or the other. I do think on balance this sells off. Perhaps next week we pull back. And if we do pull back and test this left shoulder over here, that would be the max profit taking opportunity if you're long. And I would not be surprised to see this start to roll over to the downside as we start to see liquidity drying up a bit, which actually has driven this to the upside. And we start to see tech rolling over as well, which we're seeing. So again, I don't think there's great edge. We cover Bitcoin, gold and silver every week. And I do think these markets offer much better potential for profits over and above the precious metals markets next week. And that is primarily because the dollar has been bearish, but is now trying to form a bottom, which makes all of these three here not as good as they were previously when the dollar was really weak and continuing to sell off. So that is it for me for this week, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not consider joining us in the room each day where I go through these markets and the setups that I'm personally looking at with members on a daily basis for over 75 markets in different asset classes, including stocks, bonds, forex, and commodities. So if you'd like to know more about the benefits of GMT membership, why not check out the link in the description below and in the pinned comment where you can get a two week free trial, totally risk free. So have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you all next week.